to just do kind of a simple um, field test of pit pins. Now, um, I've talked about pit pins a few times on my blog, and they are an India ink um, pen available in a variety of sizes and a variety of tips. My main focus on these reviews are the brush pins. Um, the brush pins come in 60 different colors and two sizes. They come in the smaller size with kind of a small brush tip which is good for fine details. And then they also come in a larger brush and the larger brush is marketed as the artist brush. And then they also have an opaque white, which is a bullet tip. Now, um, these are India ink, they're pigment based. Um, and since I've been doing so many uh, marker tests on a variety of papers, I thought it would be fun to pull out pit pins and see how they fare. Now I've used pit pins on tone tan paper I really enjoy it and I recently did just a tiny test on some translucent Yupo to see how they would handle and I'm excited about how that's looking but I'm not quite ready to do a full test on Yupo and part of that is I'm waiting on a few more skin tone pit pens to arrive in the mail. You see me struggling with my Niji roll here. Uh, so I'm going to use some basic cardstock. I've got a few different blenders and I just kind of wanted to see what worked with these India ink inking utensils, markers, however you want to call it. Sorry, I'm trying to move that out of the way. There we go. Okay, so hey guys. So these are the results from uh, various blenders that I used similar to what I just showed you guys. This is on Windsor and Newton marker paper. Uh, so from top to bottom, that's alcohol. So Prismacolor right there, that's what it was. This is Tombow ABT, you do get some movement. That's water, again you get some movement. And um, that's the ethanol in the um, blending marker for Windsor & Newton pigment markers. Now, Tombow ABT water and pigment marker all do cause some movement, but they also can cause uh, paper surface damage, even on a marker paper like the Windsor & Newton marker paper. So we're still trying to find a paper and blending combination that works well for pit pins. Even if you're being careful, you're going to get some surface abrasion from the brushes, especially if you're working wet in the wet. Now, the only way you can get these markers to blend is if you catch them while they're still wet. That goes for the Tombow ABT, that goes for the water, and that goes for the pigment marker. So I'm gonna try another paper and check back in with you guys. All right, so I've got some Crescent no-show render paper, and I've done a few tests with render paper before, and what makes me think it might work is that it is for use with all media. Uh, I guess you guys can't see that, let me fix that. So wet and dry should work okay on this paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Now this paper feels very dry. Like the ink, I mean, it's damp to my touch, but the ink doesn't sit on top the way it was sitting with the um, Windsor & Newton paper. It's soaking in already. And it does start to pill. Um, let me zoom in so y'all can see that. Starting to pill up around here. So already this paper is having some problems. Let's go ahead and do the tests. So this is Prismacolor. That's the alcohol portion of this test. Not really any blending. It did actually look like it made the color look a little darker. Combo ABT. A uh, little bit of blending on here. But there is a little, there is also pilling. Not a whole lot of movement on this paper. I think because it's already soaked in. Pigment marker blender, no movement. So Crescent isn't really a good choice for pit pens. 
they don't really work so well on Crescent. That's okay, we've got plenty of papers to test. Now this is Copic PM paper. I really like it. I have used it before with water-based markers. Um, that was one of my earlier tests. It has a bit of a coating. It is a little transparent, it's very thin. So you can't do a lot of layers on it, but um, it isn't as prone to tearing. And water-based markers seem to blend a little bit better on it. I'm just doing some preliminary layering tests to see if I can get the paper to start to pill. So far, no pilling. So this might be the paper. Now it's at the point at three layers, all of which were applied wet. It's at the point now where it wants to start to pill. So if you can be a little bit patient and give your markers some time to dry, they shouldn't, they shouldn't tear this paper up. They do, however, look like they want to soak through, but that was with the wet applications. And um, so I guess I'll do what I did on the cardstock and start a line over here and work on it as I test blender compatibility over here. So we're starting with the Prisma. It's a little bit of blending, not a whole lot, not enough to get excited over. And if you see me tapping this area, it's because I'm trying to see if it's still damp. Now the colors on here are nice and vibrant and I'm not really getting problems with streaking. So that is another plus for the PM paper. The Tombow didn't really do any uh, blending. Now this is not a paper that's suitable for water. So even though I am going to use water in a test, it's not what I recommend on this paper. Mm, so no blending with the water, not really. It's a little drier, not fully dry yet. That's my second layer. And now for the pigment marker. See if that works. A little bit actually on this paper. But I mean, you're not getting any clean, um, any clean edges. You're going, you're still going to have your original edge. You're not going to be able to blend that away or soften that really. It's still going to be pretty harsh. Um, so if that's how you're looking, if that's the sort of blending you're looking for, that's not really an option. And of course, by using water, it um, paper is going to be wet and buckled forever. Not wet forever, but buckled forever. So since this is one of the more promising papers, I'll pull out a couple of skin tones and see how they fare. And they seem to handle very similarly to the, um, the brushables, other than my paper is still very wet. So it sort of makes me wonder if brushables are um, an India ink product. So that was Copic PM paper. Uh, it is the most promising I have encountered so far short of vellum, which I showed you guys earlier. Now I also have a very gross, grody, dirty, that's my fault, uh, regular Copic marker pad. And I pretty much never use this. But I'll go ahead and see how they handle on this. Now my goal is if it's going to pill, I wanna find that out now. Because if I need to change how I handle paper, I wanna know that going in. So for three layers, three wet layers, 
wet enough that you can see the reflection of the water. There is no pilling yet, but it feels like the next layer is going to be enough to start causing surface damage. Yeah, by the, by the darkest layer, it is causing some pilling. There isn't necessarily a lot of streaking on this paper, though. So, that's the alcohol marker. That's the Tombow ABT. Again, this is not a paper designed to be used with water. So even though I'm using it for the test, it doesn't mean I recommend it. Water. And last is the pigment marker. So I'm not necessarily getting the sort of blending you would see um, from, say, alcohol-based markers. Uh, where there is blending with these papers, it's very minimal, almost accidental. It's difficult to control and requires a fair amount of scrubbing. Um, in future videos, I'm going to be testing the... Um, pit pens on vellum and on transparent Yupo, which I think will have a better result. Uh, the vellum works very well with water-based markers and the transparent Yupo was fun to use water-based markers on, but it is not archival in the least. You get a lot of color shifting very quickly. So um, it's more for experimentation and playing around than for anything serious. Uh, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please leave a thumbs up maybe leave a comment and consider subscribing to my channel for more marker tests, more paper tests, and uh, just more videos in general. I'll see you guys later, guys. Have a great day. Bye.